The Beer EDU Podcast, Episode 74, a show within a show with Randall Sampson. Welcome to the Beer EDU Podcast, the podcast for educators that love to learn and share ideas with fellow educators over beers, with your hosts, Kyle Anderson and Ben Dixon. Hey, Kyle, my friend, how are you? I am doing well. How about you, Bren? I am great. This is episode 074 of the Beer EDU Podcast. In case you don't know, I am Ben Dixon, your co-host. Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at bdixonnv. And you, my friend? Kyle Anderson. Find me on Twitter at AndersonEdTech. AndersonEdTech.net is my blog. AndersonEdTech on the Instagram. And then my book, To the Edge, Successes and Failures to Risk-Taking, which you can find on barnesandnoble.com and Amazon. And then there's a website for that, toetheedgeedu.com. There's also an Instagram for that. So, but I got to say, I have not been doing much plugging with that lately. Mm. Um, just a lot of stuff going on in the world right now that definitely takes sure. precedence over me plugging myself and plugging my book and everything. So um, definitely uh, trying to do some learning, trying to do some listening yeah. and uh, just not doing any self-promotion right now. So, but if you are interested, it is out there. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. But I mean, you know, Kyle, the, the, the truth of the matter is, I think this is just my own personal opinion. I think your your book is timely. I appreciate because that. So I think this at this juncture, people don't know what to say. Some people don't know what to say, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. other people um, are saying things. And right. everybody's taking a risk to move forward, right? Everybody's coming to this edge to take a risk to move forward. Mm. Um, and I think the book serves as a good guide in the stories. It talks about how to mitigate risk, um, what risks are worth fighting for, and what risks are uh, worth leaving behind that will help propel you. So I think the book might be a good thing in these times, man. I think that the book is great for, for a, a building-wide or teacher book study when we talk about taking mm. a risk. And the risk right. might be, um, it doesn't have to be necessarily full-fledged, full throat full talking about racism, but the right. risk might be, how do I change my practices or my approach to life? Uh, how do I uh, enhance my risks in my own practices and in my own life that will help other people out? Um, so I think the book might be good. I, th I really think you're selling yourself short, man. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate that. So, um, so that being said, though, I'm doing a little bit different uh, for this episode here. Normally, Ben and I do a little riff about beer, but no, we're just going to bring you good. right in, introduce yeah. our guest for tonight, Dr. Randall Sampson, yes. uh, joining us for this episode. So Dr. Sampson, Randall, as I call you, thank That's you right. for the kind words on that. And yeah, I didn't really think of it that way uh, before because- you know, like I said, I, my, my mindset was more about like, now's not the time really for self-promotion, but now that you right. sp say about it, like the theme right. of the book and everything, maybe I do need to plug it a little bit right now. So I appreciate that. Yeah, we, we all need, we, and, and this is not just even for, for this moment in time that the book is good for. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you have the long view, we all have to mitigate some level of risk, um, whether it's applying for this new job, uh, like my man Ben did a few years ago, thought about making that leap to the dark side. Um, you know, <laughs> it's it's all about how do we mitigate yep. risk in life, right? And, and yep. what chances do we take and, and who has some really great stories um, that can kind of help us walk through that. So I think it's the right, it's the right move, man. Yeah. Well, and I think, I think that is, I, and you're right. I hadn't thought about it that way, but I think a lot of people are in this real uncomfortable space right now and they're not sure like what do i say do i how do i engage do i engage i mean it's it's the only thing that only way change is going to happen is if people start taking risks and being just honest about their own their own knowledge base and and and, and asking questions i think right. that's that's the thing so if you're afraid to take that risk i don't think we're going to see any change and you can see that right now I mean, change is occurring, <laughs> and it's, but that is because people are taking definite risks to make that happen. That's right. All right. So, well, again, thank you for that. So yeah. um, let's take a quick pause, though. And, um, you know, Ben, let's uh, talk a little bit about uh, what's going to help grease the wheels of this conversation yes. a little bit with, with our, our beers here we got. So, Ben, what do you got today? 
So um, I went with a uh, one I had never had before. It's a Lagunitas, uh, you know, it's a um, big West Coast brewer. It's their daytime IPA. And um, so it is, um, I would call it a day drinking beer. And so the funny story about this is last week, we are end of the school year. Things are crazy. So one of the things that has to happen at a school is, we have all the kids stuff. And so I have all my fifth graders, which are my last grade at my school. They're moving on to, to junior high. It's really emotional. We create, we, my teachers do an amazing job. My PTO does this amazing job where when the kids drive through with their parents, we make it a big celebration. So I'm standing out there and one of my parents drives through with her son and we give her all her stuff. And then she says, you know, I think you need to do some daytime drinking. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And she hands me a six pack of this. And I'm like, man, I will, I, I guess they kind of know me. And she did give, she did give his teacher one too. So I'm, we're like, this is great. So I had not had this one. That's how I got it. So props to props to my parents for that. And it's, it is super low. I mean, it's 4% ABV, 30, 31 IBUs, low carb. It's like, it would be called a light beer, but it's an IPA. And it is, um, I would call it the definition of a crushable beer. Like it is super light smooth drinking and yeah it was just super funny because it's in the middle of all this stuff going on and she's like here I think you need this and I'm like okay thanks I'm gonna go put that in my car you're the best <laughs> we, we've said this before you are in a great place uh where <laughs> you are very lucky where you're at I mean between your staff for your 50th birthday gave you a pyramid of 50 beers and then yeah I know I mean <laughs> I don't know what that says if you ever <laughs> You better have the best reason in the world if you ever leave that place. No, I'm just saying. I'm never leaving. <laughs> yeah, no. no, seriously, Randall. It is like my school is like, it is less than a mile from my house. Like I go to the grocery store. I see all my kids. I see all my family. So it is, it is super nice to be, I, I've never, all the schools I've ever worked at, I've never been in the school community. And one of the things my mom, and I don't talk about this a lot. My mom is a teacher. My mom was a teacher in very at-risk title schools. And one of the things that she would always do is she's like, even though we didn't live in the neighborhood, we did all our grocery shopping, went to all the restaurants, everything within that neighborhood because she wanted to support that community. So I think it's super important to be part of your community. So it yeah. is nice that like my, my, my path just ended up being that, that school community. So yeah, yeah. and they're super fun. <laughs> oh, yeah. Although I don't, yeah. if my parents are giving me beer, I don't know what it says about me. I don't know. <laughs> But that, no, 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 that says you got the right culture. That, that's what it comes down to. So you got the right culture. Um, and then I so, tell yeah. people all the time, you know, culture comes down to three things. It's, it's, it's beliefs, it's values, mm -hmm. and it's behavior. So what, what do yep. you truly, do you really believe in the people that you work with? Right. And it sounds like yeah. they believe in, in what, you're, I, what you're doing. So I could not ask for a better place to be. I say it all the time. But yeah, so that was what I, that's what I'm drinking. So Kyle, Kyle, you, my friend, went with something a little, not too different, but you know. Um, not too different, but different at the same time. So yeah, yeah. definitely crushable, um, daytime drinking style beer, a lawnmower beer, as we like to say, yeah. this is the bad beat brewing quarantine goes by so slowly. Okay. So what this is, um, this is, um, now my new place in Las Vegas, I have within, um, if I truly had to walk there, I could, it's that close. <laughs> it's not that I want to. But I could walk to these places if I could. I have three breweries that are all in the same parking lot, like a mile and a half from my house. But and it bad, is 110 there, so you know. That, you that's the walk. part where I say I truly don't want to if I don't have to. So, so Bad Beat is one of those. And this Goza style is something they made during quarantine, obviously, because we were shut down. And it is 4.6% ABV, no IBU, because, well, Gozas just right. don't have you know, nope. many hops added anyway. So it is a, it's got pureed lemon and blueberries added to wow. it. So when you uh, pour it out, um, if you're on Facebook Live, you can see it is purple. Okay. Oh, yeah. So you don't normally have a purple beer. So, but I mean, this thing, it is sour. It is lemony. It's got the wow. blueberry. I mean, th this is a crushable beer. You, if you want to talk crushing beers, this is a good one right here. Right so, on. although I will say though that, sour style beers i can have like two of them before yeah. like heartburn starts setting in just because they're so acidic but no this is definitely a good one it's like, it's like eating a whole pack of sour patch 
or you know <laughs> yeah like if you, you go buy that jumbo bag like the ones yeah. that are bigger than what you can get at the movie theater and then eat the i whole like thing. candy so yeah <laughs> so the costco version yeah, yeah, there you go. yeah so. in my brain i'm 12 so i would eat candy yeah. all the time or so. what was it i saw years ago there like you could buy like the giant like three pound bags of gummy bears on amazon oh, but then there was yeah. like all these reviews that like people were getting violently sick if they ate like a whole bunch of them. well of course you would because you just ate a pound and a half of gummy yeah. bears don't even yeah. begin to complain about that sugar gelatin this is not going to process in your no. body <laughs> no. <Yeah. laughs> so and then the preservatives to keep three pounds of gummy bears fresh i mean come on <laughs> yeah so. now randall we were yeah. talking before we hit record right. that um you We'll occasionally have the beer, but right now you are on a, an amazing health journey yeah. where you've kind of like gotten away from the beer a little bit. So um, talk to us again about that because this is an yeah. inspiring story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've, I've gone plant-based um, for the past almost three years now. And so the reason why I went plant-based, I, you know how it is, you, something always triggers you. Right. And I was watching some kind of po- podcast or something and... Um, the guy said his mom had went to the doctor. She was over in England. She went to the doctor, had a massive heart attack, 63. Mm-hmm. And her, his grandmother died of a massive heart attack at 62. His great grandmother, massive heart attack at 62. So that was about the timeline in their family. And so wow. she's in England and she's on the gurney and they stabilize her. And in the hospital, they switch her to plant-based. And so she's in the hospital for 10 days and she gets better with this plant-based diet. And then so mm-hmm. she just goes plant-based until she was like 94. Wow. And yeah. so her body just rehealed and she was all plant-based right. for, for all that time. So that kind of triggered me. So I decided, hey, I'm going to go plant-based. I have diabetes in my family, high right. blood pressure, all this stuff. My, my mom, my brother, my aunts, uncles, everybody. Mm-hmm. And so I went to the doctor um, a couple of years ago, got my blood levels taken and and everything was normal. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, good. And so I went on my plant base. And then this past winter, I went back. And the doctor calls me up, says, hey, look, you know, this your numbers are just like, whatever you're doing, keep doing it. Your numbers fell even more. Wow. And, uh, you know, we're joking. He was like, yeah, you got white people numbers, man. Just <laughs> just keep, keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. Um, so uh, I've, I've been, you know, moderating and, 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 Every now and then, the, the key is uh, that I find is uh, uh, the game changer for me was like these seltzer waters, mm-hmm. like the claw and, and yep. that kind of stuff. Not right. so much the Budweiser seltzer. I'm right. not a fan of that. Um, but the claw and the truly, that kind of stuff is, uh, you know, you get about 90 calories in it, yeah. um, limited carbs, that kind of stuff. Um, and, you know, I, I, I take all the grief from the guys, right? Uh, <laughs> what are you doing over the, but you are now now this is number two though kyle right this is two <laughs> in a row actually because our last episode for white with joe marquez, marquez you know, is si- <laughs> very similar the, joe has lost well now i you know i actually just saw an update today he was down another 10 pounds so he has lost 70 pounds since february and he said that between eating better and exercising more he stopped drinking IPAs yep. and switched over to uh, natural lime flavored white claws. And <laughs> yeah, I can't argue. I mean, that's yeah, it's yeah, so, so we call them uh, in, in Ohio, at least uh, we call them the, the junior varsity and the varsity club. Uh, <laughs> so we got the, the junior varsity is when you just have a regular white claw straight up on ice. Right. So that's the J okay. and then the varsity club is when you take your favorite vodka in the glass and okay. then you put the seltzer over top of it oh wow so they call that the they call that the varsity Ooh. yeah i have said before that um That's you, can, you can do a white claw a homemade one by buying the croy water and then adding vodka but it sounds yeah. like they're taking it even one step further and taking That's the, like... the white claw and adding <laughs> vodka to it so yeah it's a little much for me yeah yeah yeah, so, yeah i don't know about that yeah well, right on man so, so yeah, that's so that's me, and I've I've lost some during quarantine, lost some some lbs. Um, so it seems like everybody's on this on this trend, maybe. Yeah. Um, so I, it's either you come out of quarantine and you lost some lbs, or you come out of quarantine and you gain some that's, lbs, right? That's going to be the question right there. <laughs> so so let's go ahead, ben. so 
yeah, let's, so let's, so for people who don't know who you are, I mean, like, give us your, like, who are you? What are you about? Uh, you know, kind of like what makes your, what's your passion? Yeah. So my, my, my passion, I'm Randall Sampson, obviously, uh, at Randall Sampson on Twitter. Um, so my passion is, is K-12, uh, working with schools, working with kids. Uh, so I have my own consulting piece. Uh, so we do a lot of blend of learning. Um, and, you know, this time when everybody was scrambling in spring to kind of go remote learning, mm -hmm. uh, our blended learning pieces that we've been working with schools, it was absolutely seamless. Uh, the only difference was that the kids weren't there. Um, mm -hmm. but as far as the content, the instruction, the learning, everything just kept going within this beat. Um, and the kids and families were great. And that's what I've been trying to prepare people for uh, the past eight years I've been doing this um, mm -hmm. as my own company. Um, but it's not um, that people didn't want to listen. They just took like the world's biggest global international <laughs> galactic <laughs> catastrophe for people to say, oh, there is a different way of doing this. So, and then they come to find out it's a lot easier. And yeah. it's actually pretty fun and it's okay, you know, so, um, but you know, you, you can only stand on that hill and, and, and roll through on as, as Paul Revere and, and, and yell it out as much as you can until it actually shows up on their front door. Um, so, and my biggest thing is uh, curation. Okay. Um, so curation is, and people often say, well, what is curation, right? So curation is like the, the museum curator, um, or the librarian, you kind of put all the pieces together, um, making a collection of what you do. Um, mm -hmm. So my thing is digital curation. So digitally taking a whole bunch of different things and telling unique stories um, based mm -hmm. on what you found um, and letting those items tell the story. So you put uh, various things together and let it tell a story. So uh, a good example would be like for you guys, you could have the, uh, um, the, let's call it the quarantine beer fest, right? Mm -hmm. And so you take all of your shows that you did during quarantine and you curate them all together and they will tell a story about what people were doing during the great uh, intergalactic quarantine, what beers people were drinking, what their conversation was, and how does that look different from pre and post quarantine? And you can mm -hmm. curate those pre-current uh, quarantine episodes and kind of compare them that way. Now you've already got my wheels turning a little bit because uh, you were the person that really introduced me and I'm sure a lot of other people will give you credit too, to yeah. a great curation tool in Wakelet. Yes. And um, so, I mean, you introduced me <laughs> to <the> that <laughs> and me now I'm already thinking about you. You mentioned about, you know, quarantine episodes, you know, what were people doing, whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm already starting to think about, you know, putting that together that would include our show notes and then like where you'd be able to find the beers that we had during that time and some of the right. other things that people were sharing on that. And then even, I know of, uh, I know of other podcasts that actually use Wakelet to curate right. their show notes and that's what they, so when they put their description on anchor or wherever they're putting their show, it's a Wakelet link to the collection of like a bio for the person that was the guest on the show, nice. the show notes, any other resources. So, I mean, yeah. just you, you saying that right there already got my wheels turning about stuff like that. Yeah, and I, I think it would be great if you guys, this is just my opinion as we're talking about this, um, after this show, do a, uh, a breakout quarantine summer uh, collection. So mm -hmm. everybody's going to, you know, starting to open up a little bit now. Right. So take some of your greatest beer uh, episodes and beers and collections, put them all into one place. And now it's like something that people can go try since we can mm -hmm. all go outside now. And you can right. actually access this stuff. So um, now people can have a menu, so to speak, of things right. to try all summer long. That's uh, a that's a really good can, idea. Then they could just tweet it back up and report out. Um, yeah. You know, using your hashtag and be like, "Hey, this is from episode twenty-one. You told me to try it. I'm I'm at this restaurant or this place, and I found right. it because I couldn't get to the restaurant." You know, right. through quarantine, but now I'm here and I tried it and I thought it's a little hoppy, I thought it's a little tasty and that kind of stuff. And then post right. the tweets. And as people uh, tweet those in, you can curate those tweets. Those tweets, yes. <laughs> and you can match it up with what your menu was. And now you have an interactive menu of here's this episode. Right. And here's everybody's tweets talking about this specific brew <laughs> for this episode. 
it only took us 74 episodes to have you on and figure this out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I'm already thinking too, I'm like, do I have a few extra bucks that I can slip your way to where you can be kind of our master curator <laughs> the for this too? He's so. a Wakelet ambassador. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> beer, the, the Beer EDU pod Wakelet ambassador. Yeah. Hey, no, hey, look, I, I'll, I'll do that for you guys. No worries, no. No. We'll, we'll figure it out. Well, we can make it happen. We can make you it got happen. a lot of stuff going. You got a lot of stuff that you're doing. So it is cool that you're... I, I think, you know, I'm sure you saw with with the, I love that, the intergalactic pandemic that we were in, <laughs> this galactical thing. Um, you saw an increase in people needing, I guess, that blended, that those ideas and stuff. So are you seeing an uptick now um, in people reaching out to you? Yeah, so, so the cool thing that's happening now is, um, everybody's thinking okay so we can open up a little bit more right but mentally people are still closed mm -hmm. and events are still closed uh, right. so now we're into this summer phase of professional development and learning so ISTE was supposed mm -hmm. to be in June canceled right so all these conferences that are in June canceled July canceled and so forth so folks are having online conferences and um, online events so Q's having something with with Microsoft uh, where they've combined with these Microsoft tools, uh, boot, uh, uh, Google's having like a Google right. bootcamp kind of thing. Here's the cool thing. So I'm partnered up with those and Wakelet had their online uh, event and Flipgrid's having theirs coming up. And oh. so I've partnered up with all of these and I call it the summer rewind. So if you can't attend the online events because nobody wants to, people are like, I'm tired of sitting in front of the computer <laughs> I've done it for eight weeks. I'm tired. Yep. I can't do it for another conference, right? But once you get back into it, and if you want to do it on your time, your place, you can go back and open up a Q Microsoft session that's an hour wow. long and watch it right. on demand at your own pace or at your own time, go to the YouTube machine and watch it. And then the cool thing is if I watch it, and I go to, uh, to my Wakelet. Mm -hmm. I just click onto my Flipgrid inside of my Wakelet, give a review of that one hour session, what I learned and how I can apply it. You put that inside of your Wakelet and you do six of those and then you submit your Wakelet for grad credit. Oh. Yeah, nice. so now teachers don't have to go take classes. Right. Now I gotta, right. I gotta register online and take another online course and go right. through the online paces and they're just, right. I'm done. I'm spent. Right. So now yeah, they're I'm using up. Wakelet and right. they're using Flipgrid to curate all these con uh, conferences that they, that they have online uh, that you can watch anytime you want. If you're out on a boat and you're like, hey, you know what? I'm out here for an hour. I'm going to hit play yeah. on my YouTube machine and listen to this thing. This is pretty cool. Then I just hit record on my Flipgrid, do a five minute review, right. what you learned, what you can apply, put it on there, you're done. And then you keep it moving. Um, and most school districts, you know, they, they use the grad credit for salary advancement, right. for license mm -hmm. renewal. Mm -hmm. um, but the cool thing is teachers also will have a playlist now that they created. Right. So once school starts open again in the fall, whether we go back or not, they have a playlist as to what right. they want to do and what they will do. So they have their resource. They can go back to their resources. That's that awesome. They create, yep, that they, that they found interesting, that they created and augmented. Um, and now it's like, I just prepped for my first quarter to first half of the year yeah, yeah. and I'm ready to go. And I was right, sitting right. on my boat or backyard <laughs> at the pool. Why not? Oh, and, that's... and so I'm going to rotate. So I'm going to do this for an hour. And I'm also going to take a look at the beer pot EDU for their summer list of the different places that I can go to go get these various <laughs> brews. There we go. <laughs> and there I am. So it's a win-win all the way around. There we go. It's a win-win. Now, you mentioned that getting grad credit for this stuff. So, I mean, because it's already great that they can, you know, curate this stuff, watch it over the summer on their own time, on demand or whatever. Talk to us a little bit more about how they're getting grad credit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the cool part is I, I have, um, and this is, you know, five, six, seven years in the making. Uh, people just think you show up and all of a sudden this idea flows, Right. Uh, so I've been like petitioning universities, finding universities that that will buy into the crazy idea. Um, almost like Steve Jobs says, you know, the crazy ones are going to be the ones that make it. 
So finally, I, I partnered up with some universities um, right. that said, hey, this is a good idea. Um, let's try it. And so now um, it's about what you do already. It's the job embedded stuff. Right. Um, so anything that you do already, the job embedded stuff, the application of learning, uh, your reflective learning, it's all grad credit now. And nice. so people just go to, go to my website, libertyleadershipdevelopment.com. Right. They find the grad credit piece and they log in and sign up. And um, it's pretty cool. You know, um, if you have a reimbursement policy with your district, buy the grad credit, send in your receipt, get right. reimbursed. Um, what? So, and I think, yeah, and I think you've, this has been, because correct me if I'm wrong, you had this in your book, yeah. I believe. So, yeah. so there's a book you wrote, which, which I'm super grateful because I got a copy. And let me tell you, it was like, right when I started, as you said, you know, went to the dark side, you know, my wife's already been living on the dark side. She's like, hey. come on over, come yep. on over, come to the <laughs> admin side. <laughs> and man, I got to tell you, like, I got that book and like, we were in Palm Springs and I read it like within a day, yep. you know, like, and then I remember seeing in there, yes, you had, you had there, Hey, yeah, if you want to get grad credit, which I, which I gotta be honest, I'm like, this is the first time that I think I've read a professional book where I had that option in it. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, so that's super that's, cool. you know, it's a uh, welcome to the grind. Um, how educators achieve exponential results. Uh, it's on Amazon. Um, see, Kyle, that's how you plug it. That's how you plug it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've read Kyle's book too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so no, it's it's a cool book, um, and it's and the, the the focus of the book is basically educator stories um, right. from superintendent to classroom teachers to uh, community uh, engagement officers mm -hmm. to. Uh, the parents, uh, so it's it's really a cool book. It covers all spectrums, and how everybody's kind of working together towards the same same uh, mission and goal. Mm -hmm. um, different pathways, but they all get to the same spot, which is to help kids. Um, so that's that's the book. Um, even books like that, books like like let's say Kyle's book, right? So I'm gonna plug mm -hmm. Kyle's book because this is all about uh, uh, giving uh, others, right? That's all. I live a. I tell my kids all the time, it's either you lift palms up or palms down. You got to figure out which way you're going to live, which way you're going to work. Mm -hmm. um, so think about Kyle's book. So any person that reads Kyle's book, each chapter, you take a little picture of a special quote or a saying that Kyle has in there. And then you take all of those snapshots and put them inside of Wakelet. So now you have a curation or collection of those mm -hmm. books, of those quotes. Oh, yeah. And you just submit that and that's your grad credit. Um, and I think Kyle's book is on, it's on Amazon, but it's also on the, um, uh, it's on the app, right, Kyle? Uh, it's on Amazon. It's on Barnes and Noble. You can get it as a Kindle as well. Yeah. And okay. um, as long as you're giving me permission to plug, I'm just going to say too that one way to make it easier with the snapshots from my book is there's actually at the end of each chapter are reflection questions from that yep. chapter. And the, what, That's so, grad so, credit, so I'm spitballing here. So this is based on what you're saying with creating these collections for grad credit. Then a person could then take those pictures of my reflection questions and they could either put those out into a doc and attach that in the Wakelet collection along with the pictures of the questions. Or I encourage people to go on social media using hashtag right. to the edge edu. They right. could take screenshots of their tweets with that hashtag from the book, upload those into the Wakelet collection to submit for grad credit then. Yep, so even uh, even let's say you do the hashtag to the edge edu, right? Um, they can hashtag that, they can take all their tweets mm -hmm. and their tweets go directly into Wakelet and Wakelet. submit that. And here's the best part. If you see somebody else's tweets, somebody's reading this book and they're seeing it a totally different way than I'm seeing it. Mm -hmm. And they're catching something that I didn't catch and I see it in their tweet and I like it. And all I have to do is hit retweet right. and then add my content like, hey, I didn't catch this, this is great. So they're retweeting it to their friends. Mm -hmm. You can submit your retweets as well. Oh, nice. Yeah, because those will go right into your, those will go into your Wakelet too. Those goes into your Wakelet. So any retweets that you have will go into your Wakelet. Yeah, because I've used Wakelet to curate tweets before, like uh, a right. really great Twitter chat I've done where I've just gone in, plugged in that hashtag and found the tweets that are coming through on right. there. And then most of the time, I will just submit all of them into my collection because it's it's part of a conversation. But right. sometimes there's ones where I'm like, you know what, there's just these handful. So I can go in and just individually select them right. uh, to create right. that uh, 
that collection as well. So, and then, yeah, like you said, you can upload the images or documents or yeah. different things as well. So yeah, it sounds like there's just all sorts of things you can do. Oh, for sure. Things right. that you're already doing anyway. That's right. And then right. you can get the grad credit for it. So now not everything in life is, is that good. So how much does it cost for the grad credit? Yeah. So the grad credit is 169, um, which is dirt cheap, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and that was my goal. My goal was to make it as dirt cheap as possible for mm -hmm. teachers because it's all about the experience. And how many credits is that? Is that that's so for one? It's one credit is okay. 169. Right. And then um, for the summer, um, we're running a, a summer quarantine special. Uh, so for the summer, uh, as schools are out, it's going to be 125 if you use mm -hmm. the code Liberty LD. Liberty Larry David, Liberty LD. If you use that uh, code, um, then it goes down to 125 for teachers. Um, so that, that kind of makes it a lot easier, a little bit more affordable for folks mm -hmm. um, during the summer months. Um, but what, what I really liked about yours is, Kyle, you have it on the Kindle, right? Mm -hmm. And this is a pro move on the Kindle. Uh, so on the Kindle, when you read it on, your, on, your, on the, either your smartphone device or the actual Kindle itself, there's a share button. Mm -hmm. And so you can highlight the text, like if there's something cool about it. Right. You know, you highlight the text, and then you can hit share, and the Kindle creates like a, a digital card that has the text in it. And you can choose different fonts, different layouts, so it kind of dresses it up. And you can save that picture onto your phone with mm -hmm. Kyle's quote, which is pretty cool. Yeah. And now you can take that picture and upload it to your Wakelet and make a whole collection of those. So now you have these really nice looking pictures with all these cool quotes with different uh, uh, fonts and different styles that represent Kyle's book. And so now basically you have the cliff note version of Kyle's book according to you. Mm -hmm. And I call that the Seinfeld effect. <laughs> story about go. the story. The story, story about the story. story. <laughs> so so hey, um, now, now you see how that came back into the show notes. Yeah, yeah I see. <laughs> yeah, no, so, although I will there say though that unlike Seinfeld, my book would be hard to just pick up anywhere in the book and uh, and get the whole yeah. story. Like Seinfeld yeah. was great for you could watch any episode any time <laughs> and not really miss a whole. There there wasn't That's a true. revolving storyline throughout the whole no. show really. So no 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 yeah. no 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 no. It, it all just kept it just kept moving, man. And you know I was just talking about this with my wife the other day about how just how mind boggling is that that show started in 1989 through 1998 and here we are over 30 years still after it started it. and we're still talking about just what a genius show that really was that show is incredible oh i mean who has who has uh, uh festivus parties we do <laughs> yeah <laughs> we do <laughs> so we all awesome. watch we always watch the episode uh, right before the holidays start, we watched we watch the episode, and that kind of gets everything going for us. So, yeah. Well, and I still talk about there. There was the episode where it could have been three separate episodes, where it was the first part of it was when Elaine wanted only the muffin tops. She oh, yes. had to get rid of the bottoms. So <laughs> then she got Kramer to Kramer, take them on yeah. his bus who was doing the bus tours yeah. and then he was providing yeah. pizza bagels that were actually glazed donuts with pizza toppings on them and then that was also the episode where jerry shaved his chest yeah. and uh so there was three different storylines in that one episode that could have been their own separate episodes that was just that it was incredible uh, oh yeah uh, i forgot about what? that one want to, to to keep my my appetite for it right because you know like we said that's kind of archive so to keep my appetite for it i've morphed over into this whole larry david kirby enthusiasm yeah. mm -hmm. uh, scene um so i'm like loving that um and i'm so glad that it came back right so i think they're gonna yeah. have another episode back uh coming up so hopefully hopefully that will continue too that that is yeah actually you know and i I'd, I'd seen it and i never really started watching it and my son my son's like did you watch Curb Your Enthusiasm? And I'm like, no, not really. And I mean, like, he's he's in his 20s. And I'm like, do you even know, like, Seinfeld or anything? He's like, no, you need to watch this because it's hilarious. And then yeah. I started watching. It is really funny. Oh, yeah, yeah. And and every time something, like, you know how life is. You walk right. into a situation, and sometimes you can see something happening before it happens. Like, it's almost mm -hmm. like slow-mo, right? Right. And when I walk into situations like that sometimes, 
And I just think to myself, and cue the Kirby enthusiasm music. Yep. <laughs> you get a little, yeah. Yep. You get a little trumpet playing. I'm just, I'm just watching the whole thing unfold. I'm like, okay, here we go. So you know, it's almost like the, it's almost like the Benny Hill show. You know, they all have that little oh. theme music. You know. <laughs> now you're going way back. Way back. Man. Way back. Way back. The, the the theme music that always gets me is uh, that guitar riff from the beginning of Beavis and Butthead. Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, but um, but another thing that um, watch this segue. How this is going to go? Seinfeld was a was a championship style show. I mean, won so many awards. You're a big advocate for being your own champion. You've got some amazing yep. ways that you encourage people to be champions, um, which actually involves WWE style championship belts. So, talk to yes. us a little bit about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, I, I love it, man. Um, and I never really thought about it. Uh, and I'm gonna I'm gonna step back just a little bit so I can set the stage for it, right? So, uh, through all of this stuff that we're having uh, in the country in this current moment, um, people always ask me, "Well, what do I do? What do I say? I don't know what you know. I'm I'm confused. I'm lost." And my thing to folks is just be yourself, stay in your wheelhouse, mm-hmm. find out what you're really, really, really good at and how can that, that help somebody else. If, if I'm a mechanic and I'm really, really good at being a mechanic, mm-hmm. great. I'm going to do that job, but then I'm going to find out, can I take my mechanic skills and maybe tutor somebody else, maybe get somebody else as an apprenticeship, uh, give somebody else access, uh, help somebody else out with my skills, right? And that's what I call being your own champion. Mm-hmm. Um, and Kyle, as you guys know, I, I fly all over the place. I'm um, mm-hmm. four hour flight from anywhere in the United States. And first thing, when you get on a the flight, they have the regular announcements. Right. It's an event that the oxygen deploys, be sure to put the oxygen mask on yourself first before you try to help out your spouse or your kids or somebody sitting next to you. And that's what it is. You have to have oxygen first before you can even think about helping somebody else out. Mm-hmm. You are serving nobody any good if you are passed out and you're trying to put oxygen on both of you and you can't even do it because you're passed out, right? And so being your own champion is about taking care of yourself, advocating for yourself, having clarity about who you are and what you are, and then driving that message home. And once you feel good about yourself and have a clear understanding about who you are and what you are, you can now champion for other people. So be your own champ, build yourself up first, and then carry somebody else. In our system in education, as educators, we're always trying to put everybody on our shoulders Mm -hmm. (laughs) and not take care of ourselves first. And we're out of oxygen, out of breath, but we're trying to put everything on our shoulders and carry it. Mm -hmm. Uh, So being your own champion, and so I have this wrestling belt, WWE wrestling belt, and it's customized. And we made one for Q Nevada. We made one for Q. And every building that I'm in, we make one for for that building. And it's, it's basically a signal. And it's an artifact uh, so that people can see this is the championship symbol and being your own champ. And so what, what we do with the belt is um, I take it to the buildings. And we the teachers give it to a kid once a day. Mm-hmm. So teachers rotate and they pass it to a kid once a day. And there's no crazy criteria of a 3.8 no 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 it's very simple keep it simple give it to a kid that's nice to other people and give it to a kid that shows up all the time that's it Mm -hmm. show up and be nice if you can do those two things as a kid we love it because you're giving a lot of effort when you show up and you're nice that's it and so we do that and i tell teachers all the time there has to be at least one kid in that building or one kid that you interact with for that day that deserves this. At least one. There has right. to be. And now teachers rotate it. And the funny thing is, here's a funny story. So we gave it to a first grader. And you know, the belt's like this big on the first grade. <laughs> and so the kid, they get to carry the belt around with them. They take it on the playground with them, all the stuff, right? And they carry it around in the hallway and they're like the champ uh, walking around and everybody sees it. Um, and so it's a Friday and so Friday, getting ready to leave, I said, hey, where's the belt? He said, oh, no, the kid has the belt. He got on the bus with the belt. Should we call and get it back? I said, nah, don't worry. He'll bring it back on Monday because the kids know the process. Right. Kid comes back Monday, no belt. 
And we're like, oh, great. The kid doesn't have the belt. Where's the belt? So I asked the kids, like, hey, kind of need the belt back, man. Where's the belt? The kid says, well, I got home with it, and I told my dad what it was, and my dad took it to work with him today. <laughs> That's awesome. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Dad's going to work like, hey. Check out know, the belt. I know your kid got an honor roll sticker <laughs> that you can put on the back of your bumper, but look what my kid got. Yes. And you beat this. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. So dad's, dad's standing around at the water cooler talking smack at the dog on the get shoulder the like, yeah, look what we get. There, there is some serious power behind that thing because oh. I, I, I knew this was going to come up anyway. I was going to bring it up if it didn't come up naturally yeah. because the, when you first showed up with that belt at a conference, I forget which conference it was, I looked at it, I'm just like, I go, that's really cool because I, I'm an old school pro wrestling fan from, you know, yeah, 80s, yeah. 90s. Anyway, got away from it for a while, but now I got back into it now with, with my kids. My kids love pro wrestling now, and I'm really getting into it too. And it's, it's kind of creative what they're doing right now. Quarantine, they can't have fans, so the storylines <laughs> and whatever. But, like, I look at these belts that they're wearing. I'm like, man, those things are so cool. But yeah. that, that one that you had at that conference, I'm looking at that thing like it was all customized. It had the Q logo on it yeah. and everything. I'm like, man, that thing's cool. And, you know, we just got talking about it. And then I remember you and I just – we walked around, just went to rooms, just poked our head in the door, and one of us would have it slung over our shoulder. And as soon as you walk in, somebody would say, like, oh, man, can I see that? <laughs> and they would either they would put it on or they would sling it over their shoulder or they my absolute favorite is when they would grab it like uh yep, like yep. The, the referee does before the title match they'd hold it over their head yep. that it, it was the best and i mean there's there's a wakelet collection of i think it's called like the belt at q or something yeah where you and i took i mean right. we must have took 200 pictures of people <laughs> holding this belt because like i said there's some power behind that and i mean these are grown adults that are getting fired up over this. I can't even imagine what a first grader is feeling like holding on to that belt that is like just as tall as they are. Yeah. Well, and then the best part is when, when you get grown adults who are fired up, right? And then you got to tamp the grown adults back because one grown adult is picking up another grown adult <laughs> at the conference <laughs> and say, hey, take a picture. I'm going to act like I'm slamming them across the table. <laughs> Right? I don't know what you're talking about. I have no idea who that person could be. <laughs> huh, I wonder. So I wonder. Well, that, yeah, I, that one got turned into a GIF, actually, because someone took, like, did one of the motion pictures of it happening, yep. and yeah. we turned it into a GIF of uh, poor David Platt almost going through a table with me hoisting him up. So, yeah. yeah. And they, well, they even had a uh, – they even had, like, one of the vendors had – remember that vendor had a green screen? Mm -hmm. And they were demoing like green screens. And then we're like, well, let's do like a MGM grand square off fight. Yep. And it was you and, 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 and somebody else. And you got little Andrew Revelo, Game Boy Drew. Who Game Boy is, Drew. Yep. So who is about eight inches shorter yep. than me. And on <laughs> even the best day, if he was a buck 20 soaking wet standing next to me. And I remember ta toe -to -toe, having to take not that shot. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was. Good, yep, you. it was. It was. Fa yep, it was. In we the were face. doing the face to face. Yep. Um, uh, to one, of, one match, another, yeah. and it took us five minutes to do the serious picture because we couldn't stop laughing. It was so incredibly funny. Yeah, and I, I just but, love. I going back to the the. I I love the criteria because I think we we in education we get we get trapped by, I mean, numbers are important. Data is important. Don't get me wrong. But I mean, we get stuck sometimes. And sometimes it's like, man, it's so simple. Show up, be nice. That's all I need. That's, that's, you do that. You're going to win. All day long. Um, all day long. That's, that's the, that's the magic secret right there. If you get kids yeah. that show up and they're nice, your test scores, all the other stuff is going to go through the roof. If you're nice right. to other people, nobody's, nobody's arguing and fighting and fussing. All the other stuff will take care of itself. Well, and I think, and you're a big champion for this. And I know in, in like on your writing and, and you talk about this on Twitter and your live tweet, your, your live stuff is like talking about culture and how like, that's, that's the thing. Like you have to have a great culture before any of this other stuff's going to happen. Oh, yeah. I think that's part of it. Yeah. And I'm, I'm going to give you guys a quick, uh, hopefully it's not too much of a spoiler. I've got a uh, thing coming out with Q, right? And so okay. with, uh, with uh, uh, let me rephrase that, not with Q, it's with, uh, with uh, Flipgrid. Okay. And 
we were talking about culture. And so mm -hmm. they kind of, you know, kind of press like, you know, people, people say culture, but what mm -hmm. does it really, how do you define it? How, how do you use it in schools? And I told them it breaks down to three very simple things. This is how I look at it. So number one is our belief. So mm -hmm. what do we really believe here? Do we really believe in these kids? Do we believe in the adults that we work with? Do we believe in the system that we're working within? Do we believe in the community uh, that we work for or live in? Mm -hmm. So it's all about belief. What do we really believe here? And then the second part is values. What are our core values? What do we really value here? Um, if we don't have a clear uh, a compass on our core values, things go sideways, right? Mm -hmm. And then the third part, which is the most important part, is behaviors. Because we can say what we believe, we can mm -hmm. put our five point value system down, but is it church on Sunday? Because our, our behavior is different, right? Mm -hmm. So are we mm -hmm. uh, going to church on Sunday, reading out the hymnal, doing all the stuff, and then after church lets out, we get into our car and then we say, can you believe the hat Betty had on in church? <laughs> <laughs> that just doesn't make any sense. So it's, it's about our behaviors, man. Yeah. It's our behaviors, you know. If, if, if you don't behave in what you believe in, and behave in, in, in the values that we prescribe to, it really doesn't mean much. Um, so that's what culture is. That's what culture is. And no, you said this is a, a collaboration with Flipgrid. Um, so uh, are you at liberty to say when this is going to be available or anything? Um, I'm not quite sure what their timeline is going to be on that. I, th I think sometime next week, maybe. Um, I'm not quite sure. Um, maybe at the end of uh, end of June is, is what I'm what I'm thinking. Um, maybe beginning of July. Um, I don't know what their publishing um, timeline is okay. uh, with okay. Microsoft because it's all rolling rolling mm -hmm. out. They have a series of things that they roll out, um, and then they put you in the queue. Um, so not quite sure when that's going to roll, but um, for me, that's that's what that's what culture is, you know. It's it's those things, and so if you think about Q Nevada, and we talk about culture, and we talk about the belt, um, Q Nevada has a strong belief system in the people that that they serve or work for, right? Uh, the core values and the mission is is absolutely on point. Mm -hmm. And when you show up for a Q Nevada event, you can see it in the behaviors. You can see the people, right? And, and the conversations that you have and the inclusivity and, and, and everything just permeates in the behaviors of everybody in the organization and the new people who are joining the organization all of a sudden morphs into that same behavior. And then they take that with them back into their buildings and they have that same permeating behavior. Mm -hmm. Um, so when you're, when you're with organiza organizations like that, that's what I typically look at is uh, those three things. Now that's, yeah, I think that's, that's huge. That's got to be like, I think that's any organization. You have to have those things. Yeah. You know, I think yeah. about in a, in a school building, like how do you, do you, do you have those happening within your building? Because if you don't, you're not going to get anywhere. Yeah. Well, and then even in your case, Ben, I mean, just thinking about what you were saying, uh, you're standing in the car line, sweating bullets like, you know, <laughs> we finally got through the quarantine thing. And the mom comes up to you and says, you need a little bit of day drinking, right? <laughs> Here you go. Um, so that's a behavior. So mm -hmm. she went out of her way to go purchase an item for you and mm -hmm. give it to you as a gesture of mm -hmm. appreciation. That's a behavior. Because she knows your belief system in, in the kids and the families and the community. Mm -hmm. And she can see it. Um, outside in the community where you reside and the value system that you have has permeated throughout mm -hmm. the building. And so her reaction and her behavior towards you was this in-kind gift mm -hmm. um, because she has a clear understanding about you um, right. or, you know, a clearer yeah. understanding and an right. appreciation too. Um, so that shows the culture right. um, versus just a, well, you're the principal anyway. That's what you're supposed to do now. Get out right. of here. Oh, that's a no, whole. No, I guess thing. no. That's true. That is a whole. Yeah. So I think yeah. That I hadn't thought about it that way, but yeah, you're right. I mean, that's that is an outcome, I guess, of of building a strong culture. And I and I've talked with my teachers a lot 
especially now, especially now. So we're, we're thinking about what's next year going to look like. So, so I'm a big believer in, you can't have a million initiatives. You can't have a million things. And sometimes they come down from a district level and I get that. But like, my thing is like, let's get good at one thing. And I tell my teachers, this is like, like, like when we talk about like a new, we have a new English language arts curriculum. And we started it this year district wide. And I said, look, that's what we're going to do. We're just going to focus on that. And then we're going to, we're going to build on that for the coming year. So I've told my staff, I said, here's the thing, regardless of how next year looks when we open up, it's going to be about culture because we've had kids out of school for a long time. We're going to have kids coming back and staff coming back and families coming back who are just freaked out. Like they're not sure. And I'm like, if we don't have a good building culture or a good, a good community culture, we're not going to be able to get anywhere next year. So I, and I've told them, this is it. We're going to do culture. <laughs> and they're right. kind of like, and they kind of, I think some people think, you know, once you're in it and you're doing it, you're like, okay, yeah, culture. Yeah, we're good. We're good. We've been doing this for years and you know, it'll be my second year, but I'm like, nope, we're going to do culture. We're going to do culture. Cause that's right. that's right. Well, and I tell, uh, I had a session with, with, uh, with fall Q. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was called, come on, man, brush your teeth. And that was the title of it. Brush your teeth. Right. And people were like, what, what's this? I said, Oh, that's culture. Cause the session was about culture, but that's culture. If you're not brushing your teeth, um, on a daily basis, twice a day or whatever it is, things get a little yucky. They get a little sticky. And next thing you know, you're going to have to have some major work done. (laughs) There we go. Same thing with culture. If you don't do it on a regular basis and you just want to do it whenever it's convenient, when things get a little yucky, a little sticky, it's too late. So you got to do uh, it daily. It's a constant thing. Culture is a way of living. It's your breath, it's your breathing, and it's brushing your teeth. So if you don't want to have stank breath, <laughs> <laughs> you got to take care of your stuff, right? If you don't want to have a stinky culture, you got to brush it every single day, regardless of how much nice. you got other initiatives, other things happening. You have to prioritize your culture. Right. No, that's- I feel like George Caro said something very similar in the innovator's mindset. It's been a couple of years since I read it. So, so that's kind of what I was thinking. But um, your analogy, nothing is George Caro's, but I mean, that, that one sticks in my mind a lot better now because you're right. Like, you know, like, yeah, I mean, no, my kids are at the point now, they're eight and five. My five-year-old is still kind of tough to get him to brush his teeth sometimes. <laughs> My daughter, she knows, though. She knows. Yeah, she's like, right. you're not going anywhere until you brush your teeth. So you don't even have to tell her. So, uh, but and, yeah, you, you, and we it. built that habit up, that culture with her right. that this is what you do uh, mm-hmm. to take care of your teeth. So you don't yeah. have black teeth that are falling out or stank breath or something yeah. like that. So I, really, I never yeah. thought of it as a way to compare school culture. And it, it's brilliant. No, yeah. it is. It's yeah, I like so what you simple. said, Kyle. You're, you're not going anywhere until you take care of your culture. So your test scores aren't going anywhere until you right. take care of your culture. Your kids aren't going anywhere social emotionally until, to, until right. you take care of your culture. Your staff is not going anywhere. They're not going to grow any better until mm-hmm. you take care of your culture. I love For it. For sure. No. Well, the school that I'm walking into in Las Vegas, um, It was, there was a situation, I guess, where it got to the point where parents were signing petitions to try to oust the previous principal. Mm -hmm. And just before quarantine, the principal that I interviewed with and hired me came in and she had to basically walk into that. And I knew a couple of the people, I see, I knew nothing about this whole situation. I saw the job opening and knew a couple of people that worked there. And contact said, "What what's it like there? You know, what's the admin like? What's what's the culture of this school like?" And that's when I learned that it was an absolute nightmare. But things had gotten better. That in a couple of short months, th- the new principal came in and started to fix things. And mm-hmm. then I was part of their. I was invited to their last staff meeting via Google Meet at the end of the school year. I sat in on that, and I could just tell, like just just by her demeanor that I made the right decision applying for that job, interviewing and accepting the position. So I'm really looking forward to it. But at the same time, I'm a little apprehensive because I'm struggling to figure out how am I going to build culture with colleagues and students that I've never met before, especially if we're still in a remote environment when it happens. Right. 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 And I I even think that um, the remote environment might help you out even more. 
And, really? And, that's, and I think about it in this way, right? Um, so with the remote environment, everybody has, has access um, okay. digitally um, mm -hmm. on demand. So you and I, us, in this show itself, we're fighting for eyeballs. Mm -hmm. So we're competing against TikTok. Mm -hmm. We're competing against Instagram. And you have mm -hmm. to put on Facebook Live because if you're not live, somebody else is. And so, you, right. so you're competing, right? And so with that, you have your own platform that kids can access 24 seven. And if you put the right content on there, kids can get to know you even better. And this sure. allows this machine uh, that's facing us, this camera is allowing us to really peel back and show our vulnerabilities too. Mm -hmm. Uh, versus mm -hmm. in the classroom setting, you have that 45 minutes right. and that's it. And then the kid moves on to their next treadmill of a class, 45 right. minutes there. And so you don't come back. And so everybody doesn't get it in that 45 minutes. And so a kid could say, you know what? I like what Mr. Anderson said. I'm going to hit rewind on that and watch it again. That, in the 45 uh, minute session, there is no rewind. Yeah. yeah. It's, no, I, it's gone. I, that's so interesting because I think one of our fear, at least my fear, and I'll be honest, I mean, one of my fears is like, if we come back and we're not face to face is like, okay, how are we going to build culture? Like, and I know teachers, they're like, how am I going to start my year without having the kids here? But I hadn't thought about it that way where you're like, and, and now I'm thinking back to some of my teachers, like when they're doing their, their Zoom meetings with their kids, the kids are super excited because then the teacher has their dog with them. And then the teacher's like, I'm in the backyard. And like, I did like a little video where I did my, my weekly to my parents, but I was up, up on top of the mountain behind my house doing my run. And I, and the kids were like, Hey, we saw you on the mountain. And I was like, right. I hadn't really thought about it that way, but I think you make a great point that like this format sometimes is actually shows more of maybe a person's personality and, and allows people to get to know them. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, and I think we're just, you know, this is just scratching the surface right now. Right. Um, so when, uh, once we're, we're talking about um, uh, even like in, in Flipgrid, right? So even in Flipgrid, you leave the prompt and you can leave a video and then the kids can chime in when they want at their time right. and do the stuff. So we, we had, I think it was fifth grade kids at the end of the year, we, we scrambled. And just like everybody else, you try to have a, a sending off closure ceremony. Right. But it was all digital. And so we just basically gave the link for Flipgrid, put it in the Google Classroom, told all the fifth graders, you have an opportunity to give your fifth grade speech. Nice. And usually it's only about two or three kids that will do it because you don't want to right. have all fifth grade doing it. Everybody's in auditorium. Right. I'm just like, grab a Snickers bar. We'll be here for a while, you know? <laughs> um, so in this event, in, in Flipgrid, we gave voice to everybody that wanted it. Wow. And so every kid that was in fifth grade had an opportunity to give their three minute speech about moving on to sixth grade and a transition and what, you know, so it allowed closure for the kids that way. And then right. we showed it in a zoom and then the kids got to see their speech to everybody nice. in the zoom right. to the parents because the parents never saw it and that kind of stuff. So it was actually, um, it was actually very, uh, very much more inclusive than we thought it would be. Oh, that's cool. Well, and I'm thinking now too, you know, I was pretty apprehensive about how am I going to get to know my kids, especially my caseload students that I'm going to be needing to work with uh, to formulate their IEPs and make sure that their needs are being met, whatever. But now I'm starting to feel a little bit better because I, I got to thinking about how during this whole thing in the, in the normal environment, I had a little bit of flexibility to go, you know, leave the classroom and go talk to a kid. If I had to, I just would talk to my co-teacher, but Hey, I have to go check in with this kid. You know, I, I know where they're at right now. You know, I'll right. be right back. I, I had a little flexibility, but most of the time I was tied to that one room. Whereas during that time from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m., whatever it was during quarantine teaching, I had access to all my kids at any time, right. whether it was right. they were jumping into Google Meet or it was I could send them a quick email or a phone call or I, I used uh, Flipgrid extensively as well, where yeah. I, right. I was putting up a weekly just to check in, be like, hey, just how you doing? You know, it, right. there was no curriculum tied to it. It was just a quick check in, whatever, you know, and I would watch all of them and I'd respond to all of them. Um, so, you know, just after 
after you explained it like that a little bit more, I'm, I'm feeling a little bit better and less right. apprehensive about what the fall is going to look like trying to learn kids names or who they are based right. on not seeing them in person. So, right. uh, so well, the, the funny that. part is the kids, once they see that we have a new teacher, Mr. Anderson, they'll Google you and they'll yeah. start curating who you are. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah. They're, 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 yeah. High school kids are going to figure it out real fast. Yep. They'll know you've written a book. Come on. They'll know all yeah. about you. Yep. <laughs> My first graders, they won't know anything. <laughs> Their parents will. Their parents, Their parents will yeah, check me parents out. Will. Trust me. So. <laughs> but, um, so Randall, now you mentioned your, your website, um, libertyleadershipdevelopment.com, where you can get some access to the uh, curation tools and how to get that grad credit and everything. So how else can people find you, connect with you, uh, learn from you, all that good stuff? Yeah, yeah. So, so it's, the, it's the basics for at least what I think are the basics uh, for me is, is Twitter and, and, uh, and LinkedIn. Um, so you just go to at Randall Sampson, uh, either Twitter or LinkedIn. Um, and then... That's one of the things that at, at the very early onset of the social media um, education stuff, I really try to tell people about their brand, be on brand and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And so then I just, at the very onset, I grabbed all the handles that were my name. And that way my name is always my brand wow. um, and, and vice versa. Um, so now everybody kind of has their own name with, five numbers after it it's like what were those five numbers again you know that kind of right. stuff so uh mine is just at randall sampson um and you can find me on twitter and instagram and just connect with me there if you have any questions comments um want to hook up about something uh and help out I, i'll help out the best that i can yeah i would i would say definitely if you're not following uh randall you you need to be because i you're always putting out really good content and i was just thinking back to like it was like earlier, earlier this month when um, everything was going on, Black Lives Matter, you posted a really great live piece about like, like your passion about, about how do I, because people are asking like, what do I do? And I think you, and I, and I'm probably butchering what you said, because it was a, it was a pretty long piece, but you talk about, hey, you know, like follow your passion. If you're being passionate about something, then that's going to help with movement yeah. forward. So yeah. yeah. And then most people know Thank you for doing that. Oh yeah. 90, 99.5% of whatever that number is of people have a good heart and have mm -hmm. a passion for something that's positive that will help somebody out. Right. Um, so uh, even during this quarantine, people are sitting at home or they're not back to the job yet, or as teachers, we're kind of taking a little break and now everybody wants to volunteer to go help to go right. do something. Right. Right. And then once people go back to work, it's like, uh oh, I'm back to the grind. Right. And I have this volunteer job that I committed to. I just don't have enough time in a day. My kids have to go to soccer, hockey, right. basketball, uh, you know, all the stuff that you have to do. And now you're you're like, oh. so you drop the volunteer stuff and right. now everybody's back to the same old same. So instead of picking up a volunteer thing or trying to get outside of your wheelhouse, stay in your wheelhouse. Right. And do that one thing really, really, really well. Right. Um, so for instance, like over at, at, at Ben's school where you guys were talking about, uh, you're going to do the literacy pieces really, really well. Mm -hmm. So if a year ago, if teachers got the literacy curriculum and they were able to take pictures in their classroom and use Flipgrid mm -hmm. and use these tools to capture those learning moments and experiences, and then curate them right? and have a story to tell. Imagine what that story would look like right now if you can go back and look at all of those pieces. Oh, yeah, right. That would, that would be like amazing. Yeah, um, so, no, for sure. But with quarantine or, or even without quarantine, those moments are all lost. Right. And that's what curation does. So the curation really allows you to freeze things in that moment. So we can always go back and examine, do we, do we get better or do we get worse? Right. What are we doing here? Instead of just moving forward into stuff that has no meaning and we're just on this treadmill of life. Right. Well, Randall, thank you so very much for joining us. This was a long time coming. We mentioned your name, yes. like I said, I think 50 times on the show prior. Uh, so yeah. it's, it's been an absolute pleasure getting you on here finally. And, uh, 
you know, I think uh, we'll have to have you on again at some point yes, here because we, will. Um, we could easily keep going for a long time here. So, yeah, absolutely, man. I appreciate you guys having no. me. Um, was this episode 74? Yeah. Yes. Um, amazing. Amazing. And uh, it was just an honor just to kind of see the, the first stage of it when you guys were just kind of teasing it out the first stage, right. you know? Well, no, we really do appreciate it. And, and like I said, if you're, if you're listening to this and you're not following Randall, definitely follow him on Twitter. His book, really, truly, the book is amazing. And then the stuff you're doing, you know, with your other stuff. And, and I'm excited to see what's coming up with, the, with Flipgrid and everything. I think that's that's what I'm I'm excited about that personally for myself. Awesome, awesome. And you also, real quick, you are also going to be doing some presentations for Q yes. Nevada um, <laughs> with the queued up event here uh, right. pretty soon. Yeah, so so we're gonna do the queued up event, um, which is gonna be amazing, and I'm just glad to be part of it, um, just to have you know one component in it. And then I spoke to uh, to the folks over at Q uh, Nevada, and I said, hey, look. Um, we have a whole bunch of teachers that are going to be virtual. Uh, some folks are going to be from out of state, which is good. Mm -hmm. uh, so we can pull more people into the mix. Um, what do you guys think about maybe uh, uh, doing a capture curate share, which is uh, uh, the component for GradClip? So now uh, with, with queued up uh, with the Q Nevada thing, you can watch the sessions and take notes on them. Nice. Uh, you can even take screenshots of so people are doing presentations or talking about stuff. You can take screenshots and then put them into your wakelet and sub submit that for grad credit. So we're excited about wow. that. Awesome. So. That's awesome. Yeah, so we'll have all the links and everything in the show notes, definitely. Okay. Yes, and that, so you'll be able to watch the queued up events live on June right. 23rd and 24th of 2020, depending on when you're listening to this. But um, if you sign up before then, you can actually pay a few bucks more to get the replays of them. So right. I'm actually going to be doing replays only because I have a camping trip that I planned out when the event's going on live. So yeah. I'll be catching up on those things down the road. So if you're listening to this before June 23rd, get on that and uh, register. We'll put a link in the show notes to that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Check yeah. it out. And look, the, the, the replays are definitely worth it, man. Um, right. Dirt cheap no, I, for the amount of content and, and great information that you're getting. Oh man. Unbelievable. Yeah. The, the number of, the, 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 the content looks amazing. So yeah. I think it's going to be really good. So right let's so, keep the conversation going. Yeah. Share some of your thoughts on today's topics. Email us at info at beeredupodcast.com. Tweet us at beeredupod using hashtag beeredupod or hit us up on Facebook at beeredupodcast, all one word. We've been doing the live recordings on there yep. again. Those have been going over real well. Uh, so watch on those. Uh, we'll put out some notices when we're going to be recording on those, follow us on Instagram at beeredu pod. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, bit.ly slash beeredu YouTube. Sure to follow Randall again at Randall Sampson on Twitter. You can send us a voice message on the Anchor app. Please, please leave us a review wherever you're listening yep. or can find the podcast that way. And if you'd like to be a guest, visit our website, beeredupodcast.com. Click on the contact and subscription info link and complete our guest form. Yeah, definitely. Like check those out. In fact, if you're on definitely on the Facebook live and I think we're doing more stuff on there, there's an, there's an op you, there's like a, it's not a, I don't know, it's a button or an app. Now I'm going to sound really old. Um, but you click on it, it'll automatically let you know when we're recording live. <laughs> so yes, you, know, you will get that notification. That yep. So check that out. So we'd love to, love to have you uh, join us on Facebook live. We have some people tonight and then also just leave, leave us a review. So outstanding so, so we'll stick around randall because ben's got some beer knowledge he's going to throw down at us uh last episode he talked about how to brew your own beer now he's going yes. to talk to you about growing some hops that you can use right. in the beer you're going to brew <laughs> which is which is something that i wanted to do i've wanted to do for so long and like uh like previously in the house that that my wife and i had where we raised our kids we had a bigger yard and we grew all kinds of stuff newer place that i live in not so much room, but I, I'm pretty sure I can grow hops in my backyard. So most of my stuff, my information, if you just Google grow your own hops, there's tons of stuff out, out there. Um, there's, you know, you can pick up any of the good gardening magazines, have articles on it. Um, most of this information that's going to be in the show notes comes from homebrewing.org or beerandbrewing.com. So pretty much a hop plant is a perennial plant 
Um, it grows in vines, usually from a root stalk. So you're going to start with a root. Um, they grow up to 25 feet each season. So they grow vertically. So when you see hops, you'll often see a wire or some sort of trestle because they grow straight up. Um, and so, and I'm going to butcher this, the rhizome, which I think that's how you say it. It's R-H-I-Z-O-M-E. It's part of the rootstock. And that's what has the buds for the propagation. So that's what you want to collect when you're collecting hops. So under good conditions, it, you can get from each vine, you can get a half to two pounds of the dried flour. And that's what you're going to use when you brew your beer. So what you do is you can you can order these online. A lot of your home brewing places, I talked about them on the last episode about where you can buy your equipment. They'll sell, um, actually they'll sell the rhizomes um, and you can plant them yourself. So you'll, you want to get those in March and April. Um, you want to plant them pretty much just like with any, any kind of uh, uh, plant that you want. You're not going to want to plant it when the ground's frozen. You're going to want to wait till March, um, April. You want to have an area that has a lot of direct sunlight, usually about six to eight hours. And then you're really going to need not a lot of room um, in terms of a planter box or something like that. You're going to need a lot of room straight up. So one of the things like I've seen where they'll run a pole up straight up, maybe six feet, and then a wire up to a wall. And I've seen a lot of, a lot of your breweries that you'll go to will have some hops depending on where they are. Um, a lot of the breweries in Oregon will grow their own hops right there on, um, on site. Uh, and they'll just go straight up the wall. Um, so what it is, is it's, it's, they use, it's, they call them, it's called a bind, B-I-N-E. And it is a climbing plant which climbs by its shoots and it's distinct. It's different than a vine starting with V. So I think people use them interchangeably, but when you look up research on it, it's B I N E. So it climbs with, and I'm, I had to write this down cause I'm like, I didn't know this stuff, which climbs using tendrils or suckers. So that's a vine, but a vine is a little bit different. So they need a lot of vertical space, 25 feet or longer is usually how tall they'll get. Um, you, you can buy trestles, you can buy, a, usually a, people will use a piece of twine and just let it grow right up that. Um, so really, as long as you have a space that can go straight up, you're good to go. So really once, it's just like with any plant, you're gonna give it some water, needs a lot of sunlight, six to eight hours. Um, you know, nothing super direct in the sun, but you know, it, it, it should have sunlight. And then by late August, early September, that's when they're gonna begin to, the, the buds, the flowers, will begin to lighten in color and they start to get real dry and almost papery. So that's your cue that it's time to harvest. So there's a couple of ways that you can, there's some scientific ways where you can test them to make sure they're ready to go. But a lot of the research that I read said, just do them by feel, you pick them, and then you're gonna wanna use them right away. So a lot of the places, your bigger breweries, your craft breweries, they'll pick theirs right away and then they'll throw them in their batch or they'll freeze dry them. So that's one of the ways that you can use them over time. But really their big thing is you gotta use it within 24 hours. So you can lay them out, they dry naturally, decide how you're gonna use them. If you're gonna use, you're making some beer, throw them in the batch right then, or like I said, you freeze dry them. And that's pretty much it. I mean, in the show notes, I left some information, I won't get into it here, about how you, how you can dry them to make them you know, last longer, those kind of things. You can, again, seal them, throw them in your freezer. And that's pretty much how you grow them, the varieties. The big one is Cascade. And most of your craft beers, that's what you're going to find. Cascade's the most popular. That's your um, floral citrus kind of smelling hops. Uh, your Centennial is also really popular. Um, and then, you know, there's other kinds, Chinook, Columbus, Comet, Crystal, um, Fugal, which is an English style hops. Um, and then there's specific ones to Oregon. So one, in my research, Oregon is like a hotbed for growing hops. So the climate is just perfect. Um, the Willamette hops are really popular. So any of your, um, your beers out of Oregon, a lot of them will use that Willamette hops. But that's, that's pretty much it. It's like any plant, you know, you can kind of experiment with it. 
um, try it out. But if you're, if you're brewing your own beer, I would suggest you try growing your own hops. That's pretty much it. Awesome. Yeah. I, I mean, I've seen the hops being grown at various breweries. I know Sierra Nevada has, I think like a two acre plot outside their brewery where they grow it. Right. And I mean, that's enough hops for like an hour and a half's worth of production right. at that place because it's so big. <laughs> but then even like the little local place that uh, Tanea Creek in Las Vegas, they've got a planter right. box right now where they've got a hop in there. It's like four feet tall right now or well, something and, like that. And I so it'll joking. eventually grow. Yeah, I always joke that when you see the hops at the brewery, it's like if you go to Napa and you go to a winery and you see the grapes out by the winery and you're like, oh, that's the grapes they use for. No, those are the grapes. Those are the grapes for show and they might use those for a special one off wine. Their grapes are coming from a huge, huge farm up in the mountains. And it's the same with hops. A lot of your hops um, are grown by local growers. And then they, they sell those to the brewery and then the brewery will grow some and then they'll, you know, they'll do a special one off. So, you know, cause you need a lot of hops. If you think about it, one plant is only two pounds of hops. That's not a lot. Yeah. Well, and then, I mean, like, like with Tanea Creek, they have a handful of them out front just as decoration right. that right. they're not going to be using it for a brew at no. all. So yeah. Cause like no, you said, I, it, it I, takes a lot more than that. Yeah. But if you're a home brewer, definitely, I think if you have the space, it's something, it's, it's just cool. To, it's, a, it's another aspect of the whole beer culture <laughs> that you can, you can try out. So, yeah. yeah, I encourage you to give it a shot. Perfect. Uh, I'm so. going to try it. It's a little late this year for me, but uh, next year, I got my spot. Awesome. So, well, thanks for that. That's, uh, that was an interesting one right there. Yeah. So, and um, like you said, Randall, thank you again yeah, Randall, for joining really us. This has been awesome. Hey, no worries at all, guys. I appreciate you having me. So, yeah. So we got coming up then. Well, our next episode will be episode 75, the Diamond yep. Anniversary one. There we so go. So we'll be coming up. So thank you, listeners. Like always, check us out on all of the podcast apps, on all the social medias. And until next time, may the malts and the hops be with you. Right on. Right on.